All right, welcome to the Fly J Sim Q4 XP. This is my very first time with it. The only thing I've done literally is buy it, load it up, put in the key code. I then forced to reload the aircraft, which I did. Um, systems clearly weren't quite right, so I quit X plane, reloaded X plane, and that's what you see here. Uh, so I've chosen the Alaskan Airlines. I just think it looks particularly. Uh, cool livery, certainly with this particular aircraft. We're on the ground here at SEGS, which is Sierra Echo Golf Sierra. And yeah, uh, I'm by no means, a, when I say I'm not an expert, not even anywhere near. This is my very first time with this aircraft. I've not read any manual, looked at any tutorials. So, you know, somebody who knows the way around a Boeing and Airbus uh, can he even get this thing started is going to be the question. And so let's jump on in. So I've set up a few controls, um, flight controls, rudder, uh, tiller. Uh, I have a left and right throttle, which traditionally I control the respective engine, but not today. Today I've bound the left throttle to the power and the right uh, throttle to the uh, propeller pitch, um, just because it's a prop aircraft. By the way, that is a lot of sound from the outside. Uh, you know, as you'd expect, airport with seemingly a lot going on. But what I have found in my very limited uh, before I hit record, and I'm just going to show this, is by default the doors open. You can click it to close it. Listen to this. How cool is that? Three quarters of the noise disappears with it. And somebody will say, well, duh, you've shut the door. Yeah, but you'd be surprised how many modules don't bother to factor that in. So, yeah, I'm a fan of that. I'm going to open it. Okay. So, how do you open it, then? Ah, open and then let it fall out slowly. There's your answer. Okay, fan of that. What we are going to have to do is start loading up the aircraft. So we've got this tablet here. I do like that they're able to check it's the latest version, which this, I think, should be standard on all modules these days. If modules can check that you've put a legit key code in and that it's not, you know, dodgy copy, then they can check it's the latest version or not, surely, and uh, FlyJ to Sim clearly have. Uh, options, I changed start from cold and dark it was set to a turnaround state i also changed it to pounds default was kilos and everything else i pretty much left as is oh steering axis i set to tiller just because i like to roll that way but yeah everything else there set as is we've got a checklist i'm going to try and not use the checklist uh, we've got the load page here and this is where we're going to start uh, so default is an empty load call for pushback once loaded and fuel loading before passengers. So I'm just going to put a little bit. So let's click select load. And yeah, I love this menu. So passengers, and you can see where they're going to sit. We've got male, female, and child, which I really like that they even distinguish between them because of the weights. It's something that uh, the Zebo mod does, but I don't see many actually doing this. Um, and I like as well the, the you know the, the different places of stick and cargo. Again, you'd, you'd be surprised. Just some modules just seem to forget about this. Uh, are these just presets? They are. So you've got empty and full, and then if obviously you can do what you like, empty, full, and then ah, I wonder what the difference between these two is. Oh, ah, must be random. I'm just looking for something where the CG looks okay. I mean, to be fair, most of them do. Let's go with that. Uh, forward hold, I'll put a little bit more there. Just bring CG forward a little bit. Put a bit more on the aft as well. There we go. We'll roll with something like this. A time on route is going to be less than an hour. That's assuming I managed to get airborne. <laughs> There's no guarantees, by the way. Uh, total fuel... 
3,000. Again, we've got random or set amounts. So empty is zero and full is 11.7. Um, I suspect a uh, quarter uh, will do us just fine. So let's go with about 3,000 pounds. That gives us the following weights then. Again, you can randomize the whole thing. Right, can continue the load on the summary page. So that's what the aircraft's going to look like. Uh, males in blue, females in pink, kids in yellow, and greys are empty seats. Uh, unlikely to have a kid right at the front, assuming it's first class, although I don't think it maybe is on this one. So there's the load summary. One last look at the numbers. Sure, and I guess these, because uh, I've not planned anything, this route here must be based on the fuel. And the fact that we've got 10 minutes taxi time, 30 minutes reserve, and then uh, uh, this much reserve fuel as well. Yeah. Okay, confirm load. Start loading. And we've got the fast load option or just loading. But if we take a look here, Waiting for the fuel, waiting for the bags because we're doing the uh, fuel cart connection. Let's see, is that modelled? I think it might be. I think we're seeing it. Is it this guy or this guy? I think that one there might be airport scenery. So I suspect it's this fella here. Yeah, that could be the fuel truck related to our model. And, yeah, fuel cart connecting, so that must be it. Right, let's get power on them. So, DC control. Uh, main battery, auxiliary battery, standby battery, battery master. Uh, so, I assume... One, two, three, four, from the right. One, two, three, four. We've got the engine gens 1 and 2. They seem to be on by default. Uh, the bus tie seems to be on by default. Bus fault is reset. External power is off by default. We're not using that. Uh, we got some lights on over here. Uh, fuel valves, what looks like for engines 1 and 2. Fire stuff, APU valve over here. Fire check looks good. Again, first time doing this, we'll just have a quick look. Things lighting up as you'd expect. Engine one, engine two, all looks good. Decent caution panel. Let's get the light, make sure this is all set to bright. And, oh no, those temperature controls. What have we got? cabin clearly isn't working because there's no way it's freezing where we are right, let's have a little look over here oh we're now loading passengers look at this packs boarding we are fueled up packs are boarding but we're still waiting on the baggage how many we got one person so far now two how long does it take it takes a long time for each individual to get through the door, doesn't it? Let's be let's be honest about that. Now it's three. Okay, well, it's still gonna probably gonna take me as long to get everything started up. I like the uh, reflections on the panels, although it appears that <laughs> the back half of the aircraft is missing. Just looks like there's a plain sky in the off in the distance. In fact, yeah, it is. Look, you can actually see the taxiway uh, reflecting back there somehow. Or is it just the... Nah, it's not the cabin, is it? One easy way to find out. Yeah, look, you can still see behind, and I did, I did suspect we were sort of looking at a reflection of the taxiway there anyway. Hmm. Anyways, okay, let's crack on. So I want to start the APU. We've got the APU panel here. Power, start, generator, and bleed. 
pretty straightforward. Those are the four controls we need. APU fuel valve over here open or closed? It appears to be closed. So if we activate the APU panel, there seems to be like a power check there and now the fuel valve is open. There's that little self-sequence check. I'd feel a lot better if we had a power light, but apparently we don't. And I guess there's not enough battery power to power the aircraft systems here. Uh, electrical. On. Both. FMS. On. Both. FMS. Still not the power for the screen. All right, I'm going to assume that any self-check that the APU's done or doors that needs to be open has done so. Let's hit the starter switch. That's a good light to see. Cabin pressure here. We can see there's a scale chart there. 5.4, basically 5.5 PSI is the limit. Much lower than most airlines that are 8 or 9 PSI. I'm not sure if that's to do with it being a prop or just the shell of the aircraft. Power now says run. We've got a gen warning light. Now either we've got to wait a few moments and then we activate it or it's just letting us know that the thing's ready but it's not on. I suspect the latter. But with nothing yet lit up, I'm going to hit it. And straight away, we've got information on the bleeds there. Which we're now going to turn on. We'll set the packs to normal. It's reading here, it's 20 some degrees. I'm going to cool it down. Let's put the smoking signs on. By the way, these switches I've noticed as well. If it's just on off like this, you can't use the mouse wheel. It's just to click. But if it's a three position switch, like this emergency light one, you can use the mouse wheel. So I can click in the way that you'd expect, but I can also use the mouse wheel to do it. I would prefer to be able to always use the mouse wheel. So even like this, I'd be fit. I want to use the mouse wheel to switch it on or off. Speaking of which, I want that one on. Right, logo light, position light on. These can stay off for now, and these as well. Why am I not seeing the aircraft lighting up a little more? Let's brighten that up. That looks good. Is there some sort of... Uh, which somewhere that I don't know about. Spoilers, we've got a flight and taxi. A stick pusher shut off. Trim shut off. Terrain inhibit. Chip is test. Turn it up on your side. Circuit breaker panel lighting. That's all. Oxygen looks like you've got a bunch. Okay. Side window uh, missed controls and they uh, don't appear to be working. Circuit breakers do. Look at all of these. I assume they are integrated with the failures, but I don't know that. Yeah, they seem to be poppable. Again, I'm trying to do this without looking. Oh. What we got here? A few cups. 
Is that just a secret storage device? Yeah. Okay, we've closed that door, but it uh, looks like standing room only for a third person, right? I, that can only be what this is, that there's literally space here for somebody uh, to stand. They must be stra yeah, they're strapped in in a standing position. Interesting. Not seen that before. Oh, it's fun figuring out a new echo. This is like why I'm not getting like the new Tolis A320. I just feel like, what's the point? I've already got the 321. It's going to be the same as the 39. You know, obviously the size is a little different, but you know, it's it's Airbus's one cockpit. Like, they're going to be the same. Not that there's anything wrong with it or it's bad. It's just I'd rather spend the money and get something completely different than just something that's exactly the same, just the size. Um, okay. Uh, it wasn't, didn't jump out at me. Didn't jump out at me. So it's got to be up here. So we've got these switches on. Uh, the generators. I'm going to turn the engine gens off. External power off. All of these are on. We've already got the generator on. That sounded like opening or shutting an aircraft door. I, I, I guess they've loaded up who they needed to load up. Yeah, so engine starters here off a normal. Starters select one and two. Cabin altitude there. I'm not sure if this is manual or not. Speaking of, oh, we, I really i am missing my electrical power here. There'll be somebody screaming at the I'm video. Tower is driving up. Thank you. Yeah, so that was the pushback tail that we needed. Airframe mode, engine intakes. I'm guessing this is all sort of ice stuff windshield stuff, lighting. I'm going to have to go through up and down. Again, this to me just feels like a fire panel. Lighting. Aircraft control. Generators 1, 2. External power off. You see, it's like why is it there and here as well? DC. Ah, AC. DC. But we're operating off the APU anyway, in theory. Okay, all doors and hatches are closed. Ready to connect. Well, you connect, but we're not going to be pushing for a sec yet. Uh, so, yeah, there doesn't seem to be any... Let's have a look at the caution lights here. Winching strap and adapter in position. Release parking brake when ready to start pushback. I will do, thank you. So, engine generators are not on. Yeah, so it's all... All the caution lights seem to be based on the engine. So I'm just thinking, why have I not got... Despite the APU being on and the gen on, why is it not feeding me? I'm guessing these are literally what they say and nothing to do with it. So where... Circuit breaker light, why not? Prop speed governor, stall, takeoff test, steering control, alternative wiper. Oh, 
Come on, there's got to be... It just feels like none of the avionics are powered. There's got to be a, a basically a switch somewhere that makes it all jump to life. Fuel and engine control. FMCs that are also not working. Turn these right. Were they off? MFD and off. Oh, I just saw the screen flash. Did you just see screen flashes? Maybe. Ah, look at that. There we go. Got there eventually. So the brightness control conceals the on off. And if I'd have looked carefully, I would have eventually figured that. Well, as I eventually did. Um... Okay, where's the FMS? Uh, these are working. Uh, so I'm going to tune these in, which I believe I uh, actually did. Uh, 12.30, that's where we're departing from. So that is set there. One twelve decimal three. Uh, we've got this other airfield over here with a VOR. This is 1310. We've got that set there, 1310. And then we've got this third airfield here, which is uh, Isabella, where we uh, did a VOR approach recently. 246, that's it. And that's set there, both sides, because that's the only NDB. Okay. For whatever reason, uh, the FMS here... doesn't appear to be lighting up. Ah, on off. Oh, there was an on off button right in the middle of it. What a moron. There we go. See, we're finally getting somewhere. Right, while we're look, waiting for that, let's go back over here to this. We are at SEGS, S-E-G-S, airport, S-E-G-S. Now uh, let's see if we can uh, hit anybody up. Um, so, Tower 122.2. Out in Oasis. Uh, let's go for 122.2. Uh, initial position, south and west, based off GPS, south 26, west 90. Uh, south 27, west 90. That's close enough. Again, discrepancy between where we are and the center of the airfield. So let's hit accept. Uh, accept. Uh, navigation database, 12th of July 23, which is... Uh, I believe, yeah, when it expires, it says here that the date is the 10th. It's actually ticked over to the 11th. I'm, of course, an hour ahead, so, yeah, it's just gone 20 past midnight for me. Yeah, so it looks like there's an IRAC cycle update due in a day or two. But, yeah, for now, this will work. And so, it, yeah, it expires in a couple of days. Fine. So, without any updates, it's, it's using the FMC that, I guess... Uh, explain is using, which of course is updated by Navigraph. Okay, that's working fine. Data page. Uh, master Crossfill. Uh, nav data. Return. Uh, nav. Uh, menu. Map. Enable. Okay. FMS one. There we go. So here's Segs. 
And there's that airfield off to the southeast. Return. So where do I put in our FPL maybe? One sex, okay. Next. List. DTO. Left, right, hold, divert. VNAV. NAV. It's got to be NAV from two, but again, I'm not. Next. 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 Your flight plan. It's got to be here. Is that the alternate and flight level in, in one? Surely not. Let's just go like... Ah, okay, so you can load routes in here. Segs. So I'm guessing you can't make a route here. You can just load them in. So, is it nav then? From segs to... Again, I'm just... I just... Again, part of this is can just somebody without any training figure it out without zero manual just based off Boeing and Airbusisms that they've picked up. Again, I want to go to Isabella here, which was, if I put in the airport code, hang on. S-E-I-I. Which is apparently South 56, West 90, 57. Well, that's... Yeah. Accept. NX. No idea what that means. Return. <laughs> I'm not going to figure this particular dude out today, am I? At nav. Previous. Next. Okay, never mind. Right. Let's get rid of that then. What was our uh, tower frequency? I wanted to say 1222, but... Yeah. 222, which is tuned in. Uh, so we'll see... I like that. Volume control. Need to see if it's on or off. Let's see if we can hear him. Galapagos. Baldra Tower. November 62890. Radio check. November 62890. Reading you 5. Great. Could actually hear him. I hate when the X play for some reason, some. Either voices or radios, like you can barely hear them even on full blast. Anyway, that's more than fine. Uh, central display. <laughs> Hopefully it just lights up if there's an error. Okay. Right, electrical power. Again, we're operating off the APU. That's fine. DC bus voltages are there. So let's see if we can start up. Now the aircraft is, yeah, lo loaded, which is great. So... Pushback tug is there, all the cones have gone and the doors are all closed, which is kind of what we expected. I think, yeah, the status for the electric is here. There's not as many buttons here as the Airbus is there, but we've got electric, we've got engine, which clearly ain't running yet. Uh, we've got fuel, which is... Uh, yeah, slightly left fuel in the left, because I assume it's been pushing the APU for the last 
thing, and then we've got the doors page, and they're all good to go. So, best I can tell, just four buttons there. All, which I assume cycles through. And for now, I'm going to leave that on the engine page. All right, let's see if we can start up then. And we're in terms of V speeds and so on, um, I'm just going to go with how it feels. And we'll see if we can make it work. Right, here we go then. So, to me this looks like all the fuel pumps are on, or open, as it calls it. Uh, the gens are all on, which I can only assume is automatic, because that was their default position. This here, although I'd like to turn the props on, I'm assuming is related to the icing and everything on that panel. So I'm going to hold off with that. Flight data recorder is here. We don't need to worry about that. Uh, altimeter set in feet or feet and meters. Well, we're not in Russia, so feet will do. Cabin pressure here. Uh, we're on the ground, so that reads zero. There's, uh, I was going to say zero differential on the PSI. There's actually a very tiny amount. Uh, it's not zero, is it? It's like 100 feet or something. I'm just wondering... We can probably adjust that here, but I'm going to turn the packs off. It does, have, it does say that they're automatic, manual, and off. I'm going to turn them off just for this first start. So we've got the ignition switches. It's either off or norm, so I assume normal. And then we've got a selector switch together with a starter. Uh, so I'm going to go two seeders. That's generally the... The, the, the way that we go I'm going to hit the start button and I'm going to hold it down until I see some evidence that something is happening then I'll let go hopefully then it will stick and then I'm going to have to manually move these throttles now there's this big lever here uh, we've got trim emergency brakes so I don't think I will need those I'll have to remember to release the brake but there's this one here that says lock control I don't know, but I assume that's there to stop the throttles being moved forward accidentally. But again, I don't know. Um, and then we've got the props here, which seems to have the uh, fuel cut off as well. We've got the disconnect here and flight idle here. So I assume these stay in place and we move these from the off uh, to the start and feather position uh, in that sort of order. So... Let's see if it works. So, let's go for it. Holding. Letting go. Sounds good. Prop RPM, 100. We've got an MC light, so let's... RPMs drop in. Uh, I don't think that works. Do you? Perhaps we had to hold off a bit longer. I don't like how this controls both. Engines 1 and 2. And I wonder if this lock... Let's turn the lock off. Oh, we'll turn it back on. Let's, uh, let's go for a start again. Let's cancel. Let's try number 1. RPM winding up. And then it starts conking again. 
And so I assume we need to put fuel in quicker than that. So let's try it again on the other side. Letting go. 27, 28. Fuel flow is up. Prop RPM. ITT is climbing. RPMs high and low. Looks like we've got one cooking. So there you go. We figured it, I think. Just how do I start the other engine when this thing is sort of connecting them both together? Let's try. Holding, 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 and release. Wow, that was a nice fast start. Must have been a bit of cross bleed at work there. like the air brakes have popped out for some reason. Uh, spoilers. Okay. Interesting. Well, the taxi and so we'll put them in the taxi position. Right, engines are on. Engine generators are on ACs set as well. So with that, let's get rid of APU bleed. Packs I'm going to set to automatic left and right. We'll turn the bleeds to the minimum just for now. See, there's no differential now. Cabin altitude close, increased open. Automatic manual dump. Let's go to manual. Let's see. Let's leave it or I can't figure it out. I don't want to waste any more time. Right, AC Gen 1 and 2, they don't look like they're on. That could just be because the APU's on. So, let's hope that the Gen here gets it. So, I'm going to turn it off in 3, 2, 1. Generate a warning. And power off. Right. Well, it's uh, static. Standby on. Static one. Static two. Ice detect fail. Test. Interesting. Ice detect fail. Uh, Pitto heat one and two. Well, surely it's working. That seems to be a one time thing. I 
collision light should have really had that on anyway. Ice detect, pitto heat one and two. LTIU, RTIU, parking brake outboard, inboard anti skid switches. Is there something over here. Uh, fuel control, auto feather, approach flaps, standard, standby hydraulic pressure, horn. I don't know, man. It seems, uh... Light slow. Pull up. Pull up. Uh, Anti-skid on. Test on. There we go. And did I have a similar switch, or...? That's it. Okay, still not happy with the AC Gen caution lights being like this. Bus fault reset. Still got them. Gen 1 and 2 are both on, parking brake. I think we're about ready to go. Signs are on, I think. Should have had that on anyway, but there we go, we've done. Uh, so let's put the taxi light on. A quick flight controls check. Uh, they're barely steering left and right. I'm not sure if that's how it's supposed to be, but I'm literally throwing my stick all the way over. So I pull it forward and back, that seems to work. Uh, rudder's working, tiller's working. Flap switches are working. Speaking of which, let's put one notch. The takeoff elevator trim is set for takeoff. Uh, trim switches are working. That's great. And all right, so parking brake then released. Letting go of the pedals. Ah, here we go. So it just looks after a while the engine intakes here switch around. That's fine. Right, airport elevation. Just going to do a real rough and dirty altimeter set. Uh, elevation 145 where we are. We see it's more like 180. Uh, so I'm just going to dial this down to, there we go, 2979, Speed bugs. Ah, select V1, 80, rotate. I have no idea. Let's go 100, uh, V2. Again, no idea. 120. Probably terrible numbers, but we'll see. And we've got another set in here. I don't know. Let's go 150. Oh. <laughs> no idea. Let's let's just see how we go. Uh, Sat-nav system looks good. IRSs just seem to have aligned themselves somehow. That must be built into the FMCs. Got terrain indicated. Let's zoom in. That'll do nicely. All right. Power. And the prop handle. So if I add power... Fuel flow seems identical. Let's move that forward and now. Seems I can't move it. That must be related to this. So let's increase the prop RPMs. All right. 
Right. That's why we had all those cautions. Not enough RPMs in the props. Right, let's set the parking brake. I'm going to ask this guy to disconnect, please. to say the sounds are pretty good pretty convincing uh, doesn't look like we've not got much sunlight left here in the south pacific go on disappear best model in the world that but whatever right he's disappeared so standing on the brakes does that release the parking brake apparently not we've let go i assume we want more throttle for takeoff so it looks like there's like three settings 8:59 and 10:20 put a bit of power on clear out the MC and again I'm keeping an eye on this over here oh definitely a pitch change whoa that's weird like you put on power and it eases off just listen again as I add power listen to that Like, almost like releasing clutch on a car. Right, let's put more RPMs. Right, full RPMs. This has got to be for takeoff, right? Got to say, the tiller's not great. It's a weird one. You've got to use differential braking. Okay, so it's one of those where I assume you've got to really help it round. You watch, there'll be somebody say, no, there's a nose wheel steering switch and you just didn't press it. Yeah, so I'm using differential braking here. Yeah, look at that. The nose wheel is just, if I put left brake, yeah, I love that. Right brake, left brake. So that's so cool, is that? Uh, yeah, we need to taxi to the right then. So let's put all the lights on. One, two, uh, strobe lights, and wing light as well. There we go. So we're all lit. I'm not sure if this is right, by the way. It's just, it just just feels like the tiller's doing nothing. It they must. It must have been disconnected somehow. Perhaps by the pushback tug, forgot to put the pin or remove the pin. Steering. There we go. move the tiller now we've got it now we've got it there so there I am moaning about the plane wouldn't be the first time would it when I'm doing something wrong
Right, that's about as close as I can get from a get- Oh, it's miles off. Yeah, it's weird. It is. It's like the powers... Those of you that have flown the helicopters in, you'll know what I'm talking about. All the power is already in the rotor as it spins and you add collective. It's already... You don't have to wait for the engine. It's already there. Um, so... It feels very much like that, like the engine, the, the energy is already in the props spinning. And so let's go for it then. Three, two, one, release the brakes. Slowly adding power. I've got the power there all the way. Surely there's more to it than this. Go on, my power's all the way forward. Come on. Come on. Hang on, I'm going to have to stop. Why was it not giving me more power? we go. Right, here we go. Not emergency power. There we go. We're on full power. Bye, she's going like a rocket. Look at the speed. 60, 70, 80. I'm calling that V1. 90, 100 knots. That was just my made-up rotate. Yeah, well early. Looks like 120 would have been a much better number. 130, she's up. Wheels up. Not a very steep climber, it would seem. Let's trim back a tad. 145 seems pretty good. I mean, I'd like to go faster, but... Uh, looks like I've got engine controls. I is, is that maybe automatic, just for takeoff, then? So power back to 75. Trim forwards, get rid of the flaps. And I want the RPMs 900. There we go. Flying nicely. Without an FMC, but it's all good. Bit of a crosswind looks like. But we'll make it work. Ah, so there is a clock here, and looks like it was automatically started actually. Zero, zero, 002. I didn't start that. I assume that's what it was. It could just be there's two minutes after midnight. Yeah, <laughs> I've just talked it twelve. <laughs> but it's not. Uh, the actual time is up there, so... 23.54. So again, slight tendency to roll to the right. I don't know if that's due to the passenger slash cargo uh, loadout, or if it's just that's the way it does. Um, but there does seem to be the ability to trim. Uh, if I... Yeah, 
so there's left wing down. So let's try it, okay? So. Yeah, look at that, much better. Still a slight roll. A bit more. I can actually see it moving the stick as I do it. Level off. That'll do. That'll do. Very, very slight still roll. It's just... There we go. Tiny press. All right. So I want to make my way towards a, the ADF needle finder. Which appears to be... Around 240. Can I make use of the heading here? Let's have a little look. Try the autopilot. It seems to be on 240 as well. It's about there, 243 degrees. Uh, altitude. Well, we're up at 5,000. Why not stay there? Right. Heading mode. Gear damper. Autopilot. Altitude. Those down. Oh, set 5,000. There we go. Autopilot seems to be working fine. 243 is set. I'm assuming we are heading towards the needle here. Again, I don't, I don't want to cheat, really. So if we set this. your side working but mine insisting it's showing the engine display maybe it always has to show somewhere huh on yours will keep it your side so yeah there's SEII so indeed yeah the ADF needles are working fine oh look at our speed we've reduced the props to 850 bit more power now So max speed is basically sort of a flaps one. Which, if we do a flyby, looks something like this. Really like the sounds, by the way. Blyde J-Sim have always been good with aircraft sounds, I have to say. Right, are we doing for fuel? 12.8 uh, and 13.6 uh, aside. That may be slightly to do with why there was a turn to the right as well. 80 pounds heavier on the right wing. Yeah, so I'm thinking this thing automatically started counting based on when we took off. Because I certainly didn't press it. Uh, spoilers, looks like it's set to flight. That must have changed automatically. I certainly don't recall doing it. All right, let's have a little look in the cabin then. So let's open the uh, door that you stand up against, it would seem. There does appear to be a seat that can be folded out, I guess, during the flight, but it's, I'm guessing, not authorised for... Just because otherwise, why would the head cushion thing be all the way up there? I've sat on those fold-out seats. That's how I used to sit in cockpit for landing back when I was 
you know, pre-2001. Um, okay, always a fan when mo modules let you do that. It's such a simple little thing, but just adds that something to it. Those don't seem to work. What? I was expecting a toilet. It's a... Uh, I guess it's an option for a toilet, but they've used it as, like, as a luggage. Uh, compartment. It says crew only, so that will be why. Oh, there is maybe a toilet... Interesting. You can apparently press the tap, but not really. You can open. <laughs> okay, very nice. There we go. All right. Let's have a little look at the cabin overall. Looks pretty good, I have to say. Again, you're not really going to be spending your time here, but it certainly passed, passes for a few screenshots. Uh, window looks fine. Good view of the engine. High wing, which makes a nice change. And you can pass the camera through the window, which I like. I don't understand why some modules basically block your ability to move the camera and you can never get a quite decent view. I think to have the option, if, if I want to put the camera here, I'll put it here, but if I want to put it here, then I want to put it here. Like, I think that should be up to the individual to decide. I don't see why somebody would artificially go to the effort of blocking the camera being able to pass through the window. You know, whether it's realistic or not, it's, you know, you can get the views better that way. That's not a great view, is it? If you sat there, the only thing you'll be thinking is, I hope this engine don't rip apart. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, if you had to, right, on a plane, I don't think I've ever flown on anything like this. I would either want to be at the back, behind, or I guess ahead of the prop. Because, I mean, all right, it's not common, but... You hear about it once in a while, don't you? The thing breaks off and whoever was sat. Anyway, that's enough of that. Are we heading towards Volcano here? Look at the scenery. We're flying into a wall of... cloud or something. How are we doing with regards to the ADF? Oh, the navigator. Hey, look at that. We're almost there. And so... Yeah, that really crept up on me. Zoom 20 miles and we're less than that. We're 15 miles away. All right, let's pull the power back. And I'm going to uh, set the props for the middle setting. All right, the approach. We'll do it properly, we'll not cheat. Although I do have the advantage of having done this recently. So we'll turn the icon off so we're not cheating. So we'll make our way to the NDB and then we'll follow the procedure. We need to be 4,000 by the NDB. Uh, so let's go ahead and set that now. Altitude, 4,000 feet, that's in. Vertical speed. Down we go. 700 feet a minute will do. Uh, where are we? Yeah, there we go. Everything that's okay. All right, so once we pass the NDB, uh, we need to be outbound 165 for seven miles, or another way of saying it is uh, two and a half minutes. So we'll just go for two and a half minutes.
this weird uh, effect through the clouds here. I'm not entirely sure what, what's going on here. And again, it's not to do with the aircraft. This is to do, this could be to do with my scenery generator thing, the ortho. I've got to say, I'm not a massive fan, but whatever. Right, speeds pretty much disappeared very quickly. And to st I don't know, we'll keep Nav on your side. It is kind of cheating, really, in it, but whatever. I've got to use my. Let's get rid of the VOR because that's. Where is it? I don't know. A bit late to start trying to figure it out now. Either way, we know that the uh, ADF is on your side, the VOR is on mine, so I'm going to ignore my side. I'm going to focus the green arrow, the ADF, which is your side. And it looks for now. I need to put a couple of degrees on. There's 4,000 feet. And autopilot is continuing to descend for some reason. Put a bit more power on. Right, there's four. Let's put out hold. Got it. Yeah, it's pretty decent fuel flow. Look at this. Between the two engines, he's talking a thousand pounds an hour, and this is just a, a nice gentle hold. I'm sure I could drop that back to 500 if I tried. There we go, and I'm sure this could continue to fly and indeed look at that it can yeah so coming right up to the airfield now and uh, that's going to be the last you know what i am going to turn it off just because it is cheating a little bit there we go and we'll put the engine instrument stuff on there and we'll just focus on this so where's the ndb yeah it's definitely getting dark Go on then, it must be swinging round us any time. And we are now 50 miles away from where we took off from. A beat beacon is starting to move and there is that cone of confusion. So what did we say? 165 degrees. Let's go for it. One six five. Just gonna pull the power back. Ah, no, it's fine. Let's leave it where it is. Right, down to 2,000 then, for the procedure, if memory serves, yes, 2,000, so, yes, down we go, altitude, 2,000 is set, let's increase the VS a bit more, reduce the power, and I'm going to start the uh, timer now. I'm just going to try and maintain roughly 160. Again, no idea on landing speeds. We'll just feel them out. Uh, approach here, I guess it's flaps 35 or less. 
We'll go with uh, the standard. Thirty seconds so far. Just based on how it took off, let's go for, I don't know, let's go for 125. Right, so altitude alert 900 feet away, which is fine. Timer's been going 1 minute 20. 700 feet to go. No working ATIS at this airfield, so 2979 is what it was where we left from. And so once we've completed this uh, segment, it's going to be a left hand onto a heading of 345 degrees. And the minimums are. Six hundred. Uh, right, there's two thousand, so holds, don't want to go any further down. Bit more power and two and a half minutes in five seconds. Let's begin the turn. Let's just stop that, reset, keep the left turn going. A bit more power. Oh, we're descending here. Why is it descending? Nose up, nose up. Perhaps I got a little bit too slow, I'm not sure. 900 RPMs, that's where I want it. Three, four, five is set, and looks like we're going to come out in line with the ADF about there. Yeah, I think we just got a little bit slow there. The autopilot, rather than stalling, just let us lose height, which is fine. All right. Let's cut the power a little bit then, and then we'll start putting the flaps down. Flaps one. Another notch of flaps. I guess that's the gear horn. A bit more power. Buy a bit more. Right, I'm going to start descending. Down we go. If we miss, it is uh, probably oh, it's four thousand. Just correcting right a little bit because so I can see the ADF needle's gone that way. Let's reduce the vertical speed again. Where's the gear horn? That's not what it is. Interesting. All right, we got visual and runway is in sight. Twelve at, uh, on twelve o'clock. Let's make a little correction to the right. I'm going to dump the gear now, put a bit more power on. Why, that's a lot of drag when you put that out. Let's go full revs now. 
now I'm going to disconnect the autopilot. So here we go, first landing, AP disengaged, and it's now steering properly, so I've no idea why it was only uh, steering partially before, but whatever, it's working Minimums. great. Right, another notch of flaps, how many we got now? Looks like one notch to go. And let's go full. Too low. Terrain. Looks like that really affects the stall speed. Terrain. I mean, as you'd expect, but I think Too I could come terrain. down pretty steep here if I wanted. Down we go. Whoa. Sink rate. Sink rate. Terrain. Okay, spoke a bit too soon there. 115 seems about right for this weight. There's quite a bit of adverse yaw. Leads the rudder. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Oh, there was like, I pulled back the way that I normally would, and there was just nothing. I'm going to give it power and just do that last little bit again. Those trails, man. Seen this before, next plane. Right, gear in, reduce the flaps by one. I'm going to start trimming down. Another notch of flaps less. Power back a tad. Less flaps again. Yeah, hearing those, you know, the engine power versus RPM, it, it, it's... You know, it's if you're used to listening to the engines to tell you what you're doing, this plane is certainly going to throw you off a little bit. I mean, you can sort of tell by the whistling where it's at, the turbo, the... But, you know, you sort of got to listen out for that. All right, cutting the power. Let's go up a little bit just to help lose the speed. Ear down, flaps... Right, let's try it again. This time, got to be aware that when I pull back on the stick, I need to pull back a lot. For, you know, normally you just like pull back like that when you flare, but on this it feels like I've got a really pull. Right, so gear down another notch of flaps. And again, and again. And let's just check that they're full. They are now full. Yeah, those weird trail effects. I'm not sure what that's about, but... Oh, that... Oh, that... All right. 500. Left rudder, yeah. I'm just braking manually. I mean, looks like you can reverse this, but I'm not sure I set that up. But never mind. Looks like the spoilers want to basically come up by default. Which is fine, unless you tell him otherwise. And I guess now it's a case of bringing these out of uh, flight idle.
Let's see what's this last option here. Start and feather. Okay. that's going to be it for this video but yeah so given time a Boeing Airbus guy can eventually get from A to B even if there were a couple of popped tyres on that initial approach until next time take care ta -ra.